Hey folks, welcome to another video about the Suzuki Sidekick EV. Uh, I know it's been a very long time since I made a video, uh, and I apologize for that, but as you might be able to tell from the surroundings here, uh, I've actually moved myself and my family across the country since the last time you saw me in this little rig. Uh, and just as a, a, a side note, uh, I flat towed it across the country uh, behind a, a small pickup and uh, that actually went really well I had no problems at all uh, it towed just fine I had put these little tabs on the bumper for the tow bar and those are actually bolted through into the frame so that was solid as a rock and uh, we went through some pretty rough weather uh, it was Memorial Day weekend, but actually out in Wyoming there was snow and rain and wind and horrible, horrible weather. But uh, even through all that spray on it and, and nasty things happening uh, on the highway, uh, this little rig came through just fine and started up and ran just like when it did before uh, whenever I, I brought it back. So uh, the only one thing that maybe happened on the trip, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, a few days after I got it here, I noticed the rear transfer case output seal was leaking again. I'd replaced it just maybe a thousand miles ago with one of the uh, Trail Tough aftermarket ones. Um, and what I'm wondering is if my twin stick kit, because I've ha had it in two-wheel drive and neutral, uh, I wonder if when towing it wasn't uh, spinning that output seal dry. And because when I pulled it out it had rubbed right through the rubber the rubber seal was was failed so anyway I had to replace that uh, but that's a pretty quick and easy fix otherwise no problems on the trip um, so the reason for this video is number two in the uh, series about components and why I chose what I chose uh, and some considerations with regard to that and uh, today I want to talk about what I consider the second most important piece of an EV conversion and that's batteries uh, first most important being the donor vehicle as I mentioned before uh, in the last video so my battery choice was a whole bunch of used Chevy Volt batteries now that's Volt with a V uh, I don't even think they're still in production and why can't I find the hood latch there we go uh, and you're looking right now if the camera angle is decent at three of my Chevy Volt battery banks now, I'll get into a little bit more about that in a minute but why did I choose Chevy Volt batteries uh, used ones at that and I'll tell you the number one reason uh, was at the time that I built this conversion budget was a huge factor uh, and I really was trying to do this uh, without spending a tremendous amount of money uh, just for the sake of the family and, and my own uh, interest in being frugal. Uh, and after doing just a little bit of research, it was obvious right away that the least expensive way to get uh, lithium ion batteries was to purchase Chevy Volt batteries that uh, come out of uh, a wrecked, you know, or a salvage car. Um, these batteries I bought, what I ended up doing was buying an entire Chevy Volt battery pack. Uh, it came on a on a pallet uh, in the still in the the enclosure. So the Chevy Volt had a a big T shaped, um, mostly fiberglass or some kind of molded plastic uh, enclosure for all of its batteries. And then on the base of that was a little bit of steel that they were mounted to. Uh, but that whole thing was sealed up and uh, it contained the cooling system, the battery management system, everything was all in there. And when I bought what I, the, the original uh, pack that I bought, I got the whole thing. It just showed up as one piece. Um, and if I remember correctly, that cost me, by the time I got it delivered, right around $2,000. And that's 20 kilowatt hours of, uh, no, 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 not 20, uh, excuse me, the, the, the one pack is about 16 kilowatt hours uh, in a Chevy Volt, at least the, the, the vintage that I was buying. Uh, so not a huge amount of electricity, but if you look at the cost of it at $2,000, I don't think I could have even bought brand new lead acid batteries for that price. 
Uh, then once I, I started the, working on the project really quickly, you know, after looking at the vehicle and, and thinking about range and how much power I wanted, uh, I decided I wanted a little bit more. And luckily at that time, there were a few people on eBay that were uh, disassembling and reconfiguring used Chevy Volt battery packs and selling them in pieces. Uh, so in order to get what I needed, uh, I just needed to buy, I think, two more of the uh well, let's see no i would have had a little i would have had a little left over and i'll explain in a minute but i had to buy one more 48 volt uh module and one more 24 volt module i believe is how that worked out and then those were a little more expensive per kilowatt hour of course because someone had put in the effort to disassemble them uh kind of repackage them and reship them uh, so i think i paid somewhere in the neighborhood of 800 or so for those so my entire investment in batteries for this rig is somewhere in the twenty-eight hundred to three thousand dollar range, uh, which again, when you talk about EV conversions uh, and and purchasing batteries, whether you're buying new lithium or you're buying used Tesla batteries or whatever else, uh, that cost and granted that was four years ago now, three, three and a half four years ago, uh, but still that was a very very low cost of entry for getting the the power that I needed um, reason number two that I chose them is uh, the packaging so you can see here if you look at these these batteries um, this what you're looking at right on top is one of four modules that I installed in this rig and what you're looking at right here I, I labeled it B1 uh, and that's B30 on that end because this is 30 cells lined up sandwiched like this in this this plastic casing um, the way gm designed these batteries uh, they're very modular and they can be uh, sort of within segments they can be pulled apart and put back together to make the right uh, voltages that you want in series and they all fit together all these plastic uh, sandwich pieces all nest together nicely so it was really flexible and allowed me to make uh, the modules that I needed, which are nominally 120 volts, that's 30 cells, because each cell is roughly four volts in most lithium uh, battery chemistry. And I didn't have to go through and build each pack myself. If you, if you buy individual uh, lithium battery cells, uh, you'll have to build the pack with, you know, a, somehow arranging them in a container or, or, or framework and then putting your uh, your jumpers between each one. In this case, the jumpers are already built into these modules. So this is 48 volts here, 48 volts here, and 24 volts back here. And so I only had to build put jumpers across those modules. Uh, and you can sort of see under the, this plastic cover is, is protecting most of it, but just along the edge there, I've got aluminum. And the reason it's all black is uh, whenever I finished building these modules, I took some rubber paint coating material and just painted all the uh, aluminum on the top that would be exposed um, so that it's non-conductive and at least has some protection from short. And then these wires you can see sticking out here are my, uh, what I call my poor man's battery monitoring system leads that run over to this uh, little block over here where I can check voltages now i don't have one on every cell i have them every six cells so each one of these should have roughly 24 volts between them and i check them periodically and that's leads me to, to the third reason that i chose these batteries and that's the fact that based on the research that i did uh chevy volt batteries had an excellent excellent reputation for staying balanced without any uh intervention and I really, really did not want to put in the weight, the complexity, the expense of a, a battery management system on this vehicle. And I know there's a lot of debate about that out there. Some folks say it's crazy not, not to run a battery management system. And I tend to agree if you really want to push your pack to its limits. Uh, if you want to really discharge low and charge high, absolutely, you got to have a battery management system. Also, if you're going to be pushing a, a really huge currents, you know, you're racing, you're drag racing, stuff like that. I was doing none of that with this. Uh, I run it 
between 90% and 30 or 40% most of the time. Uh, and I charge on uh, 110, level one charging, super slow. Uh, and this little rig does not pull a huge amount of current. So there was no reason for me in my mind to want to put in a battery management system, but I still wanted batteries that would likely stay balanced pretty well on their own. And uh, the good news is that reputation has been, th these batteries have lived up to that reputation. Uh, every time since the first few cycles on this thing, they kind of, the, the, it was interesting because the first few charge cycles, there were a few tenths of a volt difference in those 24 volt segments. But after that, they seem to balance themselves out and I just have never ever seen any significant imbalance more than about a tenth of a volt uh, in, in a 24 volt module. So I think for as far as that goes, uh, I really like the Chevy Volt batteries. Um, now what, I'll just show you how they're installed in here a little bit. Um, I did not build battery boxes. Again, uh, one could debate the merits of doing that or not doing that. Um, I don't have any active cooling on them, so I really didn't want to box them up and contain the heat that they might generate. Uh, so far, they have not really generated any significant heat anyway, and that's partially because of the fact, I think, that I've got these set up in a uh, 30S, which I talk, told you already, 30 cells, uh, but 4P, uh, four parallel, modules uh, configuration so there's three here there's one on top two down here underneath this one's a little tough to see underneath my poor man's controller box or not excuse me not controller but but uh relay box i, I used some angle iron and some flat bar and some all thread and basically built clamps to hold these down and then there's no way you can see it here on this on the video maybe the very edge but i built an angle iron frame underneath these batteries and it rests on the old uh, IC motor mount. So you can see that piece of steel with the two bolts in it right down there under the steering shaft. That's uh, bolted right into the motor mount and there's one on either side. So uh, up front, there's three of these modules secured very well uh, to the motor mounts. And also to the, there's a front cross member up here. Maybe you can, no, you can't see it under there. Maybe down here. Um, Right up front, you can see that angle iron bolted into the cross member at the front of the frame. So that way, uh, I was able to fit three modules in the, the engine bay. Um, and of course, for those that may not remember, I deleted the transmission, so my motor sits in the transmission tunnel, if you can see it right down in there. So that's the only way these modules were able to fit in the engine bay, is the motor sits much further back than if I had maintained the transmission. And then the fourth Chevy Volt battery module sits on the old fuel tank skid plate right back here <clears throat> i don't know how much you can see on the video but uh that fuel tank skid plate was actually very substantial that's one of the great things about these suzuki's they were really built to go off road and uh, stand up to a lot of abuse so the tube steel and the sheet metal on that skid plate was solid enough that i was able to use a piece of the chevy volt battery pack steel underpinning that you can sort of see right down there on the edge of the battery pack it's got two pieces of uh, angle iron bolted through and holding it on to that skid plate uh, and it just sits right in there um, it doesn't use quite the entire space that the old fuel tank did but there was no way to fit more than one of those 120 volt 120 volt modules back here uh, i was hoping to get two and two to balance the weight a little better two up front two in the rear but it just didn't work out that way and honestly um, this gives me a little more rear weight carrying capacity still in the suspension anyway so if I'm throwing stuff in the back end of this little rig I don't have to be too worried about how heavy it is um, so I've talked about all the great things about these Chevy Volt batteries and why I like them uh, and I am glad that I did it this way uh, but I'll be perfectly honest with you there are some downsides and I think if I do another conversion, I probably will not use Chevy Volt batteries. Um, and the reasons for that, first of all, the obvious one staring you right in the face, they're huge. Uh, what you're looking at right here in these, these three modules under the hood is only 15 kilowatt hours. Um, 
that's just the, the energy density is very poor there so uh, other battery types especially Tesla's uh, are going to be far smaller and somewhat lighter for the same amount of energy because they don't come packaged with all these cooling channels and cooling plates in between them and all this extra plastic all over um, so that convenience that I got with the way they're packaged makes them larger and heavier than they would be otherwise um, so that's one thing about them the other thing that uh, I'm a little frustrated with but I should have known I I had read enough about Chevy Volt batteries to get it in my head that even after 20, 30, 40, 50,000 miles, they were retaining 90% or better of their capacity in these in the in the cars that they were installed in. Um, maybe I just was trying to convince myself of that or something because the reality is uh, these really only appear to have about 80% or a little less of their original capacity. Whenever I look at my discharge curves. Uh, on some data logging that I've done and I, I I discussed that quite a bit in the another video I posted about range uh, and showed a bunch of that data for those of you that are into the math um, you should check that video out but uh, where I had hoped with this vehicle to get close to 50 miles of range uh, my effective range in good weather is probably closer to 35 miles uh, which is a little bit frustrating but at the same time uh, even here now where, where, I, where i was when i built it the original use case was a small mountain valley where everything was within about eight miles of each other uh and then if you left the valley you had to drive 40 miles to get anywhere else so the the, the little rig was just never going to leave the valley uh we left that area we've relocated now and i'm in another place where uh town is about three to four miles away uh, and there's lots of other things farther away that if it had more range, you could go to those places. But I can still get to the grocery store. I can get my kids to their school. My, my daughter's going to use this for her high school car here in just a couple months. She'll get her license. Um, license here where we are now. She had it in the other state, but different rules, different states. Anyway, uh, so for, the, for what we need it for and what we're going to use it for, I still think the, the range is adequate. Um, So that's that's where we ended up with the with the batteries, you know. Uh, I hope that's helpful for everybody. There's a lot of con a lot to think about when you choose batteries for an EV conversion. Um, you know, if I was going to do it again, I would probably buy used Tesla batteries, but I won't say that for certain because it would depend on the vehicle I'm converting. Uh, it would depend on the, the voltage I was going for. Um, a lot of different things are going to play into that decision, but. Uh, for this one, the Chevy Volt batteries are working out great, and uh, I'm happy with the choice. They, they were very cost effective. And so anyway, hope that's helpful, hope that's informative, and uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.